Blog Talk Radio. Uh, today is Sunday, September 10th, 2017, I think. Yeah. And school is officially in. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh huh. Even more abrupt this week. (laughs) 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 So, um, welcome to Bulls In. I'm Mitch, and I am joined today um, by my always illustrious co host, the always. um, (laughs) Sorry. The never singing Anthony. And what up? What up? No mel- no melodies, melodies whatsoever. And um, the never, the the never songy Aaron, because he doesn't do a lot of that. Never really nah. heard him. Nah. Mm. Nah, I don't do much of that. What's up, y'all? Nah. So um, I'm a little, I'm a little melodic though. You know what? I think being melodic <laughs> is a little bit different. <laughs> Um, and so today is the singers who rap, rappers who sing, sing songy rapper show. And that <laughs> sounds like a crazy ass mouthful. <laughs> but, but, I, but trust me, just bear with us. This shit is legitimate as we have many issues <laughs> with this shit in today's um, musical world. Brought on by shit from before that created, as, as Aaron would call it, Blurred lines. Yep. yep, that's what it is. Hey, hey, hey. So, <laughs> um, first let's let's the first two we can talk about um for the first class period. Um, rappers who sing and singers who rap. So, a and this is mostly defined by what it is the person does by trade so if by trade you are a singer and you happen to just start flowing into verse on your own shit then you're a singer who happens to rap if you are a rapper by trade and you happen to bust into song or and or you sing all your own hooks because that happens a lot i think that shit happens so you don't got to pay nobody these days right i was just thinking about that too like <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's that's what it is they don't want to i don't want to i don't want to pay uh i don't want to pay um whatever singer tanashi or whoever is popping or whoever's gonna come in and sing your yeah whoever's gonna come in and sing your hook Cause like back in the day, before the lines got blurred between hip hop and R and B, you would you would bring somebody in to sing your hook, and or you would bring somebody in a lot of times to to rap for you until right. you started getting new jack swing coming through. People was like, "Fuck that, I can rap." Right. So, <laughs> so, exa- so like old school example. Oh, you okay? Aunt? Yeah, that was just sad. Why? <laughs> Why? Because now it's like now it's like everybody says that I can rap, anybody can rap. That's not well, the case. it's true, but you got to remember what things were like back then. So you know, uh-huh. I mean, you you had you know, like I'm going to let um, Aaron bring up go back as far as um what he was talking about off air earlier what the force and these yeah yeah um i mean it's kind of understandable around that time because you know like around that time like you know people people looked at rap as more of a novelty so they did uh-huh. 
it was yeah. yeah so like um i don't think that stuff was like frowned upon as much <laughs> was and, and they actually did rap too like they were like you could almost like be like okay well i don't know what to call them because they were singers by trade that and that's why we would call them singers who rap but yeah, they exactly. were but out but out in the streets like on in Staten Island, they were as known for their their rapping as they were for their singing. Just they didn't, they weren't known for that amongst people out in the public. They were known for being crooners more. In mm. Yeah, that's interesting because I was just thinking like um, I listened to uh like for some these and I was thinking like I don't I don't take like songs like itching for a scratch like when i hear itching for a scratch like it's not something that i sit there i was and I, just like, thinking I, that i was i don't i don't i don't hold them i don't hold them you know what i'm saying to a song like that whereas like if you hear like tender love or um right. or couldn't care less and stuff like that or like, tears um, or like here right. i go again yeah right yeah stuff oh. like that like you know um i'm more you think about them more in, in that vein than um than you do when it comes to right because i think you're looking at quality too like like what are you, what is this person you know like really really excelling at too and like what are they known for exactly like we yeah. just we just we don't know for the the force and d's for being mcs right we know exactly. them for being crooners so but which, i mean which is a lot of hip hoppers like ghostface had him on his first album singing Right. <laughs> shout out to Ghostface. Shout out to Ghost Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, you know, he had the force because they're from Staten Island too. So you know, he had them on their um, on his first album, Iron of Man, and, like doing a little interlude just before um, Daytona Five Five Hundred. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, remember? So I mean, I mean, like you had people from the hip hop world who definitely um co-signed them and saw them as very legitimate even in the hip-hop world too like they they loved them and what they did yeah but see that's why that's why i feel it's important to talk about like you know acts like that because um you got you got like some culture vultures as we always talk about that that sit there and they'll pinpoint they'll pinpoint something like that and say, mm. well, hey, well, this, well, this person did it. Or, oh, you well, mean that Vlad? Person did it. You mean Vlad? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not even, not even, not even just Vlad though. Like it's regular people that to sit there and pinpoint certain stuff that doesn't that doesn't paint the whole picture of what and it um, doesn't what's being fit, represented. It doesn't fit the criteria, and that's the reason right. why we're doing this because people don't understand what the big deal is, but it is a big deal because as we've said before. When you start, when you continuously blur lines, ugly things start to happen where yep. the aesthetic that is R&B is generally one of love and is love focused. And those are the themes that you hear in R&B, traditional R&B. But when you start, rap is street and it's gutter. And when you start blurring those lines, then you rip the love out of the R&B and you replace it with gutter and you don't have any more love there's no more love out there anymore it's just a bunch of gutter shit and then you wonder why everybody's on some gutter shit out in real life and most people are so obtuse they literally do not understand what happens like they don't fucking get that their art is what is you know right is actually affecting that shit like looking at um Gene in an interview the other day and I, when I say Gene I mean no Malice aka Malice formerly of Clips for those who mm-hmm. don't know who I'm talking and he's talking about he changed his name from Malice to no Malice because that shit means something right like, yeah. like, I mean like I mean if all your friends are crackheads what is going to eventually happen to you <laughs> yeah yeah, that, yeah. Even, if, was, even if you yourself are not on crack I mean that's Right, I was paying attention to that part too, like, um, cause he, he did speak on that, and I think that's something that, um, like, we talk about a lot too off of air, um, 
about how you know like the stuff the the messages that's being conveyed a lot of times is like putting a certain amount of certain type of energy in the air and people don't yeah um, people don't respect that you know what i'm saying well i mean it's it's again it's fine it's fine to to have aesthetics and themes attached to shit hip hop but hip hop is what hip hop is right. R&B should not start taking on the aesthetics of of you know of what hip hop is like and like Aaron was talking about I think maybe two or three shows ago where where you're not even singing R&B anymore you're just singing rap lyrics yeah exactly that shit is fucking stupid. Like you shouldn't yeah, yeah. be. Doing and then that. you know the part that kills me is like you know you got you got people that's really out there and Anthony can attest to this because he put the post out. Like you got people that that say crazy stuff. Like I can't. I, I would be interested to hear Chris Brown make a rap album. And it's like so. What the hell you been listening to the last to the last five years then? And see, Chris <laughs> Brown. Chris Brown is a singer who raps. Absolutely, he is. And. He's like the modern day example of like a Bobby Brown, because Bobby Brown would do the same thing. Bobby would rap yeah. on his own shit. Um, like Guy, like with Teddy Riley and Guy, they would do the same. Right. They would break into a like. There are songs where Teddy's just ra- like rhyming over, you know, the songs. And Aaron's like Aaron is in the back singing hooks. Yeah, exactly. But you know, see, this is the, this is the part. Though, yeah, that's this the part where it gets confusing because, mm-hmm. like, what's the point in in singing rap lyrics and then going into a straight rap verse on top of those of lyrics that you just got done singing? You well, know what I'm saying? Like, that's, issue, that's not the same thing that like Bobby Brown didn't do stuff like that. Bobby Brown didn't no. sing rap lyrics and then start rapping next to no. It. <laughs> right. He would actually rap. A lot of times, his raps were in conjunction with what he was singing. Uh-huh. Yeah, that too. Yeah, true. So if he was like, you know, like so, like for girl next door. Right. You know, yeah. He's singing, you know, there's this girl, oh my God, and then he goes, you know, he starts rapping about the girl next door. Yeah, or don't be cruel where he's like, hey, what's up with this attitude? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, like, his his rapping is along the lines of what he's already, you know, talking about in the song. He's not jumping on there talking about, I hate always going back to these hoes ain't loyal, but that shit is just... <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, what you're saying is... So, so, basically, what you're saying is, like, um, the way Bobby Brown and them did it back then was, like, they were rapping love lyrics instead of... Yes. <laughs> instead of the other way around, where it's, like, you yes. singing rap lyrics and then you rapping yes. real rap lyrics over top of that. that yeah. They maintained the, the R&B aesthetic even when they were rhyming. Right. Most yeah. of the time. Most of the time, yes. Yeah. Mm. Like someone like R and B, also like 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 Bobby Brown or like an Al B Shore. No, they would mm-hmm. always do that. No. They would be rhyming the same aesthetic that they had already started with. The but see a Chris Brown, who's a singer who raps, his aesthetic is partially hip hop. Mm-hmm. He's already singing rap lyrics in other songs. These hoes ain't loyal. Those are rap <laughs> lyrics. Those are fucking rap lyrics. Like no uh, no actual R and B artists of the eight of like the eighties or like even early, early like like nineties would be si- singing something like these hoes ain't loyal. Nobody would do that. Nobody would well, do that. Well, you would have Belvis DeVoe say me and the crew used to do it. They did, <laughs> but, re- but but remember what that shit was. That was what we were talking about. That's when that shit started. That's what kick started all this bullshit. It's mm-hmm. like, hmm, you know what? Let's just make the R and B just on, on the same fucking you know level. Let's just cross the R and B over. But you also have to remember too, they did have songs like "When Will I See You Smile Again." And, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. You know. But it's, so it's back to what we were just saying about Force and Bees, where they were more so known for those love ballads than they were for that one little line that 
Right. That a culture vulture would try to pinpoint and say that's all they did. BBD. <laughs> I mean, BBD was bad. They had more than one. So, like they had BBD. I thought it was me too. Where they talk about a fucking groupie being right, wild. Right, right, yeah, yeah. They had a couple of wild groupie songs. Like their up tempo songs, you know, had had some grit to them. You know, I mean, and I love New Edition and BBD and them, all their incarnations and Bobby and Johnny. But I'm not going to not, you know, slap BBD on the wrist. They are also rappers who sing because, I mean, sorry, singers who rap because, because for Poison. Yeah. They rap their own shit. They didn't bring yeah, in exactly. outside rappers. Right. But see, that's another reason why, um, like, um, it's important to, like, to delve into like the bigger picture of a particular artist instead of sitting there and like pinpointing one particular song well that's kind of that's kind of naive and it's it's a little short sighted you have to look at the overall and then you know like so we're talking about rappers who sing now so rappers who sing and, and we discussed this a little bit off air like Missy Elliott She's she's a rapper by trade, even though we don't necessarily think that she's like a heavy, heavy lyricist. Mm-hmm. She's known for um, rapping, not singing. Does she does she count as a panderer? You know what? I used to think so, and then I started because I started the more and more she went along, I was like, she was she was she was doing so many things that like paid homage to like throwback shit I I'm tend to believe more what you believe Aaron I think she's mm. just I think she's Paying like a homage. throwback yeah I think she's like a like a, a throwback to earlier hip hop days when people were like yes right. yes y'all and more you know uh-huh. right yeah yeah that's what, that's what I was that's what I was thinking like that's why I like um as I got older, like I was, I was the same as y'all. Like um, growing up, like I really wasn't into Missy like that. But my cousin listened to her a lot, and um, my favorite album from her is probably um Under Construction. That joint was dope. Yeah. But but um, as I when I got older and like paid more attention, I realized that that's really what she was doing. But you know, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, especially like during the nineties and early. Whether somebody was. was like. Whether they were pandering or whether they were just paying homage to that particular era. Well, that was the era where pandering started becoming a fucking thing. Right. Like, really, really. Like, when the commercial aspect started really, you know, taking effect. So, it was hard to tell a lot of the time. Oh, I just... I didn't say on air, but I had just finished seeing... Um, the upper echelon of rappers who sing. I saw Lauren Hill and Nas in concert um, <laughs> a couple of days ago. Um, yeah. and they had a Live Nation concert. And <laughs> that was some life changing shit right there. What, what, what was the, what was yeah. the most life changing part about it? Just both of them. Like, they're just they're just better than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they make everybody else look like shit. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing I don't like about um this uh this generation of artists um really too like they're they're really okay. They're okay with the last generation still being able to outdo them. But they, they don't see it. It. they don't see it as being outdone though. That's what I don't get. When I when I say that, it's like like for example, like I'll hear um people like uh the ugly guy ugly guy to say stuff like he know his I'm not you know I'm not really that good of a rapper and it's like he knows that and it's like you know it's like that's that's okay. I guess you know what I'm saying. Well, there, but, but there's a whole slew of them that because they they don't give a shit about anything but money. That's why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not that good of a rapper. Put the mic down. <laughs> but but so you got to remember, and it's funny I got to tell y'all this. This is your generation. They don't see lyricism as being a part <laughs> of hip hop. 
and that sounds stupid as shit to mm-hmm. us. They associate lyricism with the boom bap era. Like being right. a strong lyricist or, you know, like being extremely lyrical. To them, hip hop is not about being strongly lyrical. Thanks a lot, Soldier Boy. You always blame Soldier Boy for that. Yep. Yep. And it, it's not just it's not just with rap though. Like I feel like a lot of the R and B singers are pretty much in the same vein. Like they don't care. Like if you were to sit there and compare some a particular R and B artist to somebody like you know, uh, to somebody like oh Anita Baker or somebody like Angela Winbush. Like it's like mm-hmm. it's like why it's like why I gotta be compared to somebody like that or why you know why I can't just do me. And they don't because you don't want to admit that you suck, and you don't want exactly, anybody telling yeah. you that you suck. You fucking suck. <laughs> like they, they hate, they hate that shit. It's like you know, and, like why can't? <laughs> and you suck. And not only do you suck, you suck. And <laughs> <laughs> it's serious. It's like it's like for some reason this generation don't have the same um the same uh uh ambition as the um previous one like when i was watching an interview with um i think y'all i think y'all watched it too the g-rap john where um he was talking about when he met when he met big pun like big pun you know kissed the ring and everything because yeah you know it was like you know his way of respect like you know what i'm saying like i do this because mm-hmm. of you, you know what i'm saying and i just i, I appreciate this, the fact that you show Show me love the same way that you know what I'm saying, like that I'm carrying on tradition or whatever. Well, let's and, just um, talk about how how um, Nicki Minaj behaved when she met Lauren Hill. Like I think we all saw that. Like she was like, yeah, yeah, bowing down to her, like I'm not worthy. And no, you're not worthy, Nicki. <laughs> no, Onika, you are not worthy because what I saw on Thursday, Lauren Hill would fucking eat and spit out anybody 20 years younger that's up to her right now. Right, right. Like, she was moving back, and Nikki will spit and then sing, too, but not, like, like Lauren will first of all, Nikki can, can't necessarily sing really well, but Lauren does both. She's not like Missy where, you know, like her her rhyming is not as, you know, as lyrical and her singing is a little bit better. Her singing and her rhyming are both high ass caliber and she can move effortlessly. Like she moves back and forth between the two like she's brushing her teeth and combing her hair. <laughs> and she was a mic just spitting like rapid fire. And then she would slow down and she started singing. Then she started rapping and she started singing. Like it, the shit is insane. I've never seen anybody could do that before in my life. Besides, just you know, Lauren being a good, you know, a great MC. She's known for her, her MC, but like Ant put her on his R&B list <laughs> <laughs> because she sings know. as well as she raps. Like she's not, she's not fucking Drake. You know, Drake is. <laughs> You know, Sorry. he's he, his ass is questionable at both. Sorry. Known as a, Sorry. as a fucking Sorry. rapper, but I mean, how well is he doing either either thing? Or he's auto tuning is what most of these folks are doing when they sing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. True. And then when they rap, like what? Are they, and he's not doing a throwback shit like Missy. I'm Aaron. Nah, don't, nah, don't, it's not don't make a case for that shit. Not the nah, I ain't trying thing. to make. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't, and it's probably because of the climate that we in. But I don't hate Drake. Like I don't hate him, but I don't really, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't subscribe to that either. It's the same as like um, like Anthony just got done talking about uh, Mike Shinoda, <laughs> and it's like I don't, like I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate Lincoln Park. You know what I'm saying? But I don't really. I'm not the, I'm not the biggest. I'm not the biggest I'm not a fan. Park fan. Like I you know. don't like. Yeah, them. like I don't hate them, but right. I, I wouldn't be a person that likes them. Or my I like. I, yeah, see, but this is the thing. Like, <laughs> see, this is the thing about Mike. This is the thing about Mike Shinoda, though. Like, I, I, I'll argue that I might. I'm, I'm more liable to see Drake in a in a cipher than I would Mike Shinoda. 
Well, yeah, yeah. And that's my point of calling him a rapper who sings. <laughs> right, so... And, and kinda... he's, he's done rapper shit. Like, he's been involved in battle rap. Right. That's, that's hip-hop aesthetic. Like, R&B singers don't have battle rhymes <laughs> with each other. That's, right, that's, exactly. That's not, R, that's not R&B. That's what happens in, in rap. So, if you have battles... And you're, you're, you're a rapper. Did y'all hear about when uh when when uh when Premier uh basically like kicked Justin Bieber out of the um BET cipher? <laughs> Did I hear about that? Um, no, yeah. I love it. Yeah, he was yeah. talking about that recently. I love it. I love yeah, he was talking about that. <laughs> That's gatekeeping at his best. So, was he talking about? Was that on Drink Chat? Drink Chat. <laughs> um, I don't know when I don't know when I uh, seen it. They were talking about it, but um, that was the whole conversation was just like messed up to me. Like, um, the the funny thing is, like, Premier was actually considering it, and then he said that Justin Bieber said something about he needs somebody to write his stuff for him, and Premier was just like, you know what? No, just no, no. Nah. Like, I don't even know why Premier was fucking entertaining that shit in the first place. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I was like, get to, get out of here, you mangy mud. Get out of here. Yeah. I mean, that's that, it, that it, shit it, is it. beyond blurred lines. It's like, what the fuck? You do not belong here. It's a right. cipher. Go tap your friend Eminem and send him in. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is wrong with you, dude? What are you doing? But that's what I'm saying. Like, people have gotten way too fucking comfortable with these blurred lines. It's like, well, I'm a, I'm a singer who can rap because I can, you know, no, dude, stop it. Right. That shit is for it's, it's for novelty shit on your own record. Okay. Yeah, exa- exactly. It's <laughs> not for you to get on somebody else's shit and do it. Now, people like BBD back in the day would sometimes do that, but it's because they blew up and they got big. But they were still a novelty. It wasn't like they went out and just started making rap albums. Yeah, well, I mean, they was doing that like they was doing that when they were new edition too. Sometimes it wasn't. Yeah, you know, their first three albums they have rap songs. The the first one has um um pass the beat. Right. Yeah. The second one has kind of girls we like, and their third one has um school S C H O O L. Yeah. Well, they rapping in the middle of cool it now too. Yeah, they always did that kind of shit. Yeah. They loved hip hop too, so. You know they would do that, but it was a novelty. That again, like you said, they weren't attempting to be right, right, rappers. yeah. Mm-hmm. But see now, somebody like fucking um, what's his name? Uh, 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 dark skin um singer Tyrese. Tyrese making a fucking a whole rap album, calling himself Freaky Ty. Or free a black tie or whatever he calls himself. Right. <laughs> and people going running, yo, people going running cop that shit too. Who yep. bought that? Who bought it? I did. <laughs> yo. Okay, so do we had to read. Put... We had to read his book. I um, shot the one. Way. Um, <laughs> you don't know about that one. Yeah, so where we that. put? Oh, where do we put Jeffrey? Where does Jeffrey go? Jeffrey is a rapper who sings, right? You talking about Jaru? Yeah. I always call him Jeffrey. Mr. Atkins. <laughs> yeah, he's a rapper. Yeah. What about DMX? <laughs> nah. <laughs> you There's know ra- what, though? DMX never sung. DMX don't sing. He carries Sometimes through. he does. He will go in there a little bit sometimes. It's but I all think right. It's, part of it's his, okay. I think it's part <laughs> of his cadence. I think some rappers, their cadence sounds musical. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're singing, but I think that their cadence, you know, sounds musical. And that's the reason why it's, it almost sounds like they're singing, but they're really not. So what about what about people like Curtis Blow? Is it, you know, my favorite shot is that's, the alley you. See, see, that's what I mean. His, <laughs> his, 
his <laughs> cadence and his flow is just naturally musical. Like he's not singing. He's mm-hmm. he's rhyming. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. I, yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't. He's definitely not singing. Yeah. To me, um, DMX has, has a very musical cadence. To me, DMX does. Like, yeah, like he he'll start up and he's not he's not singing at all, but it'll sound like very rhythmic. Y'all see that video where he was uh, singing Jingle Bell? Unfortunately, yeah. He was well. Was he rapping it or singing it? <laughs> he was. He was rap singing it. <laughs> <laughs> that accent sounded more like Jeffrey when Jeffrey starts singing. Rap singy, rap singy, rap rap yeah. singy. That sounded like how Jeffrey gets. Cause like you know, how does? Cause like Jeffrey will start rhyming a little bit and then he'll like start full fledged singing at the ends of his lyrics. Yeah. You know what I think it was too? I think a lot of the um producers that certain artists was dealing with, I think they were like more into the R and B side of things and they just like mm-hmm. threw it on the artist. Well, you know what? I blame unfortunately I blame G Funk for all of that shit too. Mm. Really? I can see that. I can see that. Because before G Funk came the shit wasn't melodic at all. True. Like, they were saying like that. They were saying Boom that on the, uh, wasn't melodic at all. Right. They were saying that on the hip hop evolution, John. They were saying about how um how um the chronic opened up um people's ears and hip hop to more melodies and stuff. It well, it didn't just open you up. It forced you. Right. Because just that's what they wanted to hear then, and all of our boom bap just kind of went by the side. It was like, fuck your boom bap. We want to hear. Love Monday. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, um, that is first period. Um, and I feel today like I felt with Erica Badu two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> like I really hate this shit. I need your help, Ed, because this is hard. <laughs> I don't think it's that hard. They are yeah. I feel Not so bad though. So is out it, to is lunch. Necessarily a bad thing. Out to lunch today is brought to you by Bone Thugs. Uh, uh, everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody. Oh, <laughs> yes, you love that, Bone Thugs. But is that necessarily a bad thing, though? Why? What you mean? Why is it a bad thing? Is it a bad thing that they're out to lunch? I mean, I feel I like. I mean, generally, that's what out to lunch is not a good thing. <laughs> that's why they earned they earned that spot. I will they say this spot. about them: they they did they did that shit at the best level possible. Like, Cause like even it's talk about like um like I was just talking about how see me I I tend to look at it as like you know who you more likely to see in a cipher and I can see I can see like Bone Thugs in a cipher but it'll be done in a way where it's like you know they'll switch back and forth in the middle of the rhyme between you know melody and just straight bars. There is no straight bars with Bone Thugs. <laughs> it's all melody. Have you ever? There are no. And in in the in the infamous words of Ant, if they do do that shit, it ain't on those songs that you like. <laughs> true. Okay. True. But I scoured their catalog. There are no songs that they are fitting on for longer than about ten to fifteen seconds. Right. True. <laughs> well, this wasn't that thing. I mean, they're called Bone Thugs in Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking harmonizing they're <laughs> but to, again to their credit they're doing that shit it's not they're not doing it like like Drake would do it they're not auto-tuned at all right either 
Like they're and and they 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 pay attention to the beat. They're riding the beat out. They're they chop their voices up kind of staccato like like they're 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 using their voice as an instrument more so in that when they're doing that shit. It's not just random. Mm-hmm. So I give them credit for doing it at a high level, but that shit is fucking singing. They chanting, man. They chanting. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like they, they had a lot of singing. impact too on the sing songy rappers today. They did not have. They had all the influence. Mm-hmm. That's why these mofo's out here auto tuning it up, thinking that all this fucking singing they have, singing, rapping, not even rapping, just auto tune singing they doing. They're singing rap lyrics, what they fucking doing? Because that's what Bone Thugs did. They sang rap lyrics. Yep. True. See, but they weren't doing it. They weren't doing it as R and B singers. They were doing it as rappers. So, but that's the point. It's because that aesthetic at the time, there was still a line that was drawn in the sand. So, because of what they were talking about, because of their themes, because all they talked about was violence and crack and welfare checks. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> Even the bitches carry guns. Yeah, uh, uh. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because those were all hip hop aesthetics, they got called. You know, they, they were a hip hop group, even though they were singing. Um, they were actually voted the most melodic hip hop group of all time. By the way. I forgot. I think it was Rolling Stone. Did Rolling Stone do it? I, I no, say. MTV. 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 Yeah, like yeah. the most melodic hip hop group of all time. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's some oxymoron shit. <laughs> what the fuck is hip hop? Oh my god! I just thought about something. <laughs> what? What? Bone Thugs are like indirectly responsible for that P and B nigga. Mhm. There you go. Oh my goodness. Peanut butter rock. Peanut and butter rock. A whole bunch of other trash artists. No, they like they like responsible for him and like the way the way Ms. Mitchell just got done talking about. Like he he one of those rappers that um that that sing street lyrics. It's like you know it's okay to just like be melodic with some street lyrics. Well, why not? You know, Twenty One Savage and shit. Oh my time goodness. Time of the time. Time of the time. You know. You don't just get on the mic and just sing about all kinds of things that should only be rapped about. So that we know that there's a line demarcation of, of street shit from, you know, R and B shit. No, just you know, sing those. Sing those lyrics. What about Chance? What does he do? We talked Thanks. about that earlier. <laughs> she ain't got no Netflix. We just watching. What you say? She ain't got no cable. We just watching Netflix. We're gonna throw him in in the sing songy rapper um, <laughs> because he sings his rap lyrics. The same thing. And yeah. and and short like Bone Thugs. Like he Bone Thugs is responsible for Chance the Rapper too. Yeah, of course they are. But see, it may, it may, I don't know. I guess it's because we in the age of information. So, like, everything, like, get passed around more so than, like, back in the day, like, you didn't hear uh, other artists doing stuff like that outside of people like Crucial Conflict because they from the Midwest, too. And the the same with um, Bone Thugs because Bone Thugs is from Cleveland. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, but you know but, what I'm saying. But, but Bone Thugs took that particular aesthetic from being, but they but they also embraced the G rap musically. So they had the the G funk sound behind them. Mm-hmm. When I was going on though, and that's why I blame G funk for it because be, because until that shit became melodic, you couldn't right, have a Bone Thugs. Mm. Mm, that made perfect sense. It does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, like, what? Where would they be singing? How would right. they be singing off that shit? How do you sing off See, a that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of weird for me now because, like, because P and B rock is from Philly. 
my hometown. And I feel I feel like back in the day he wouldn't have existed the same way because um you know you had it was barriers it was like you only did certain stuff because you were from a certain region mm-hmm. like so right. chance, be, because true. chance is from chicago it's like it's only right that the whole sing songy thing like fall upon him because you know bone thugs and crucial conflict and people of that true uh, that yep. nature mm-hmm. that's true and again, I want to stress that well, when that came out initially, I did not like Bone Thugs because I was like, these motherfuckers are singing their rap lyrics. And everybody was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> I was like, I want my fitness to spit. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, do you all not know what they're singing? <laughs> but I was being called crazy. So it was like, whatever. I guess I'm dead. Yeah. And so... It wasn't until Crossroads came out. Well, first, before Crossroads, it was first of the month. First of the month was my shit. I ain't even gonna lie about that. Mm-hmm. It was anybody's shit. Well, not Chris Rock. He was like, niggas singing <laughs> welfare carols and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first of the month. <laughs> that shit was fucking hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I liked them after Crossroads came out. I was like, okay, I respect what y'all do. I didn't always say I liked it, but I respected it. Yeah. But I respected Bone with Thugs. Does not mean I'm going to respect the stupid shit that you do. Who like insert dumbass rapper here? <laughs> right, pretty much. Who's not doing that shit creatively? Who's not doing that shit on a high fucking level? Who doesn't have fucking stellar production quality behind you? You know that there's some shit out there that's separating that shit now. It's not like Bone Thugs is just out there. Right. But they actually um, did give a shit. Yeah, I think I think it all boils down to nowadays just people like trying to find some some strange way to stand out from the rest of the crowd and not doing it very well. And on top of the fact, but nobody just, stands out, Aaron. Everybody sounds like everybody else. Everybody sounds exactly the same. Yeah. I don't get how they don't hear it either. We're saying now it's not meant for people like us. What? You know what? People like us bullshit. We still have ears. We know what we hear. <laughs> that shit not meant for us. Well, we ain't on drugs, number one. <laughs> I think well, who was a little who you said it's not meant for people over twenty five. No, cause I know plenty of folks under twenty five who aren't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> who just don't like that stupid shit. Yeah, it is stupid. And you know what's like, you know, um, you know how I know that um, we got to the we got to the point where like the whole the whole respect factor is just out the window because like I said earlier, like you didn't have that back then. Like you had you had like um, the 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 big puns and you know uh, even even people like Ti. Like I think they paid they paid homage to what came before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they um they had they had some sort of respect for what came before, so that's the that's kind of what they were trying to live up to. Whereas nowadays, you got artists that's coming like, well, we don't we don't need respect from you know whatever came before, whether it's yeah. R and B or or rap or whatever the case. Is. And well, I mean, because they don't have that model to look up to to say, okay, this is what was good, this is what was bad all their shit and, and, and they don't want to be judged it it all sounds crappy <laughs> yeah I think I think that's probably the that's probably the biggest issue with it you know what I'm saying like, like I'm, again I'm gonna give it to Bone Thugs Bone Thugs doesn't sound crappy though right like I'm not saying even though we're giving them OTL I mean we're blaming them for the bullshit that happened after them we're not even blaming them for them right 
Right, exactly. <laughs> that shit yeah. was right. actually good. But the, yeah. You know, but, but I mean, I wonder what they would but, say about what they're hearing out here now. I wonder. Right, but that's that's what's funny to me about it, cause it's like you know you don't you don't seek you don't seek your approval or you know what I'm saying you don't you don't base what you do upon, um, the you don't base what you do upon the approval of what came before, but at the same time if if you get called out on it then you won't point the finger. Well, Bone Thugs did it. Well, Lauren Hill did it. You know what I'm saying? Is that kind yeah? Of, they did at a much higher <laughs> level. Right. Is fucking doing. Right. Yeah. Is that is yeah, that kind of thing that we dealing with? Okay. Your shit is not high level, as we always like say. You're you're a you're a fucking low vibrating piece of shit. Right. <laughs> but it's it's funny to me though because like we talk about how like a lot of these uh these new cats like um low low pump low Uzi and all these weirdos like we talk about like how, pump. <laughs> That's funny. yeah that's his name Lil pump. <laughs> no, but it's so funny. <laughs> but, uh, we we talk about how they try to cater um to that to that whole punk rock uh aesthetic, but at the same time, I feel like people from that genre would smack the shit out of you. They just be they like, would. they be like, what the like you know what I'm saying? Like you ain't getting no respect from either side. Like don't no. nobody no. don't nobody subscribe to what the hell you doing. You know what? Speaking of that, we because we were talking about before, like. XXX Tentacion, like his shit wasn't just horrid. Right. Like it doesn't have to be bad. Like you can, you really can do something, but you have to know what it is that you want to say and why, and and you you should know why you're doing what you're doing. Is that a case of doing bad? Well, you know what? I'm on. Yeah. Yeah, but I but I I saw him when I initially saw him. I said, "There's something about that kid. It's not just he's, he's not just fucky. There's something about him. I see some talent in him. I think he's just, maybe he just needs to hone in on it a little better. I think he could actually, you know, be be pretty decent. Right. See, but you didn't have people playing around with. You know that type of I don't know what genre of music I'm trying to. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't yeah. Know what type of, you didn't have people and, and, doing and it. I don't know who I music. am, and I don't know why. I'm just kind of out here. Right until I'm gonna see what I'm gonna see what sticks, and then run with it. That type of shit. No, you just seem confused as shit. Right. You either seem confused, or you seem like you're just down for it, like you're just trying to make money. If you're just trying to make money, that shit is always gonna be wet. Like just you know, you're participating in art. Artist is is not, it can't just be purely about money. Like you're gonna you're you're gonna be wet. The, the shit will shine through that all you want is money. It'll ring false. It just it, it fucking won't be good. Do you think do you think that um? Because I was talking about it with P and B earlier. Like um, do you think being from um, or rather, not uh, trying to or trying to stray away from what identifies you. All right, basically, what I'm saying is like, I know you what from, you mean. Yeah, if you're from a particular region, you know what I'm saying, and it's like, oh well, I don't want people. I don't want to come out with a song or you know be the type of rapper that you know people could be like, oh, he from down south or oh, he from the west coast. You know what I'm saying. Like, but everything sounds so southern now. It's hard. Like you can't even tell anymore anyway. Yeah, exactly. But that's see, I, I blame that. Um, I blame that kind of on uh, the internet. Yep. Well, because yeah. because everything is so much more accessible. Like back in the day, yeah. you had to you had to actually go to Atlanta. Like as a as a New York rapper, you had to go to Atlanta to see, you know what I'm saying, to see and experience the type of stuff that UGK and 8 Ball and Infinity And that's what Bone about. Thugs did, because they went to Los Angeles, and they were like, oh, okay. Right. This this fucking music, okay, we see what this is. 
Yeah, but now people do this thing where it's like they don't want you to. I don't want you to know where I'm from, or you know, oh well, I'm 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 from I'm from Philly, but sometimes I be in Atlanta too. It be that kind of shit. I you know what I don't. I, that shit hurts my head, Aaron. But I think <laughs> I, I, I think, think it's that's more fun when the artistry is there. But my but I guess my issue with it Aunt, is you consistently when you don't want to be identified all the time. It just makes me think your ass is lost. Oh, yeah. Do you not know where you are? Right. <laughs> That's what. See, and the reason well, the reason I, the, the reason I ask that is because um I hear a lot of older artists talk about it all the time. Like they say that they miss that. They miss like you know being able to know where a rapper was from based on what they talked about because it was I like. Miss it. Yeah, it was like it was basically like like um um MC Eight was talking about it on the uh, interview. And he was saying, like, you know, he, he liked being from the West Coast, but, you know, he had never been to New York on the East Coast at the time. You know what I'm saying? But he would hear them talk about certain stuff, and it'd be like, Dad, you know what I'm saying? It's basically like you a fly on the wall in another part of the world. You know what I'm saying? Right. Listening, to those, listening to those lyrics or listening to them tell their particular story. And, and the that, same see, thing. that's what you just put it. You just fucking nailed it. It's right there. It's your story. You're right. telling your story. If you are from New York, if you are from from Wisconsin, if you are from Los Angeles, your story ain't Dirty South. That's not your right. story. Exactly, yeah. So what I'm saying is, it, that's what I meant by ringing false. It's not your fucking story you're telling. You're not telling your story. You're telling somebody else's story. Mm-hmm. What's your story? Like, look, like we all talk about um, about Tanache being so bad because you fucking all over the place. We don't know who are you. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. Why are you that's, here? Yeah. Why are you fucking here? Why are you here? Are yeah, you about what... having something to fucking say? What are you trying to tell me? All right. And so, who um... you are? Who you are? Partially, partially is about where you came from and where you feel like you're going and what it what it is you have to say and what medium you're using and you're choosing to say it and in that medium what genre like some people their shit is an R&B aesthetic this is this is me some people I'm too street I'm a why are you doing both are you telling me you're both? And that's what I feel like people did with hip hop and R and B, like blending. They wanted to tell me that I'm both. Right. If you really are both, this shit will ring true. If you really aren't, if you're just doing it. Yeah, I think that's what that's what makes it worse too. Because on top of the fact that you want to play in 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 two different fields, you don't even want to be held to the standards of of, of previous generations. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem is, and you just again hit the nail on the head. When you start blurring lines, now what are the standards I'm holding you to now? Mm. Yeah, true. Because different aesthetics have their own different standards depending on what the themes and what the components of that genre are. And see, you start dragging all your sing songy mess in here, and all of a sudden, I don't have to hold you to lyrical standards. Right. That's the problem with that shit. So, that is out to lunch, and we will continue this discussion forever. Because it's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to define the sing songy rappers. Segue by Bone Thugs and Harmony. A sing song well, sure rapper. <laughs> I miss my Uncle Charles, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> a sing song rapper is a rapper who is singing their rap lyrics. Okay? If that confuses you, listen to what we defined earlier about <laughs> the difference between R&B aesthetics and hip-hop aesthetics. 
okay? R&B aesthetics would be, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hip hop aesthetics would be, I wanna fuck you, I wanna fuck you, I wanna <laughs> fuck you. Those are hip hop aesthetics. So, um, question. Yeah. Where are we putting LL Cool J in this conversation? <laughs> He's definitely a rapper. <laughs> But, that, but that's part of the issue because, you know, because uh, uh, Ant calls Drake the, um, the LL of, of your generation. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pays me. See, but, that. see, that's, that's not even, that's not fear. I don't think that's fear at all. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not fair, though? Because it's different with LL. Like, LL, LL will rap some lyrics. He'll rap some R&B lyrics. He'll be like, you know, I want to kiss you, hug you, squeeze you, and love you. That's you know what true. I'm saying? Like, like Drake, Drake, don't, Drake don't do shit like that. No, he <laughs> sings songs to strippers. Right. On top of the fact that, on top of the fact that, you know, um, his, his uh, the fact, whether he writes his rhymes is suspect, so. Well, you did bring up something because LL did... He did have times when he would be, but it was different songs. Like if mm-hmm. if, if he was doing "I Need Love," you know, that's very much R and B ish. I need love ish type shit. He's not going to get up on Dear Yvette and do that though. Like there's a different. Like he's definitely a rapper. Right. The time and the place for everything. He differentiates, whereas. Um, a sing-songy rapper like Chance the Rapper, yeah. like you know Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bone Thugs is going to sing rap lyrics. They're going to sing, and and by trade they're quote unquote known as you know rappers. No one thinks they're singers. Right. Exactly. Imagine they're surprised when they listen to this episode. <laughs> Look, I told that them this shit years ago, okay? Everybody knows they're fucking singing. The hell. But, like, all these issues, like, oh my god, like in the 90s and, like, early 2000s, the dark days of hip hop, I call them. When you got, you know, of course, because people like Bone Thugs made this shit popular, all of a sudden you got Nelly. Please play a song to me out to me where Nelly is actually sitting on anything. He sings everything and he sings it badly. Andale, andale, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Going down, down, baby. Your street in a Range Rover Street people. But he never, ever wasn't actually. That a, wasn't that a double Dutch, a double Dutch song? Yeah. It really, it really was, though. <laughs> but that was part of that that late '90s, early 2000s aesthetic. Like, you took songs that girls like. Right. People, people didn't realize that shit was going on a lot during that time. That's how because women buy more music and they love more music than men do. So they were trying to figure out how a way to get women to listen to that shit. And how you do that is you get yourself a nice little sing songy rapper. That's like another. Nelly. I think that's another reason why um it's a lot of stuff that got infiltrated when it comes to rap music too because um like you said like rap rap women um, rap women like uh <laughs> women women buy more music so like if that's if that's like the the bigger audience you know what I'm saying and you know what we know from what we know it's not too many it's not too many females like you that that listen to a lot of rap music and listen to it yeah. different way. You know what I'm saying? They don't, so, the, the, the average woman is not listening to hip hop the way I listen to it. Right. Like, I mean, you should have saw everybody dogpiling me when I was talking about, when I was like jumping down um, little Yachty's throat and like talking bad about little Yachty's dad defending him. I was like, that shit ain't hip hop. Nah, Your dad nah. defending you, <laughs> right? In a battle, Negro. <laughs> if you want to call, if you call out Joe Budden because he calls you out, it is now time for you to go to the microphone 
okay? And you need to rhyme. Your dad does not need to get into a Twitter beef with Joe Button. That is not hip hop. Yeah, that's some, that's strange. And all the all the but all the women like jumped on me in a dog pile like and all the guys were like, Yeah, sis Tell them bras to shut their mouth. <laughs> yeah. Like I was um I was reading on uh on Facebook, like it was a lot of it was a lot of females um saying that oh Joe Joe be hating, Joe always hating on uh on everybody and this that and the third it was the Migos situation and that had just happened and like um more females were just like I'm I'm tired of Joe hating and he ain't been hot since pump it up. And it's like well you know what I'm saying? Like that's why that's why a lot of okay, times Okay, so like, that means they females, don't know shit about slaughterhouse is what is what they <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's why but a lot see, of times like that's the point. You know, they don't know shit about hip hop. Shut the fuck up. You don't know right. anything about actual <laughs> hip hop. You don't. But but, but we've but like allowed we just got that to say to it. be infiltrated. Yeah, it's because we dragged shit into hip hop that doesn't fucking belong there. We erased that line, and now we got a whole bunch of other shit in here that doesn't belong in here. Like we got people singing shit. They don't like fucking like your boy Justin Bieber. It's like I want to be in a cipher. No. <laughs> <laughs> this shit ain't for you but people have dragged every other aesthetic into hip hop and dragged every hip hop aesthetic into R&B where it doesn't belong like you talking about how you want to fuck me from the back on your R&B song it doesn't belong here mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm talking about how you want to you, you want to fucking pound me from the back and not call me the next day that shit is not R&B dude take that shit to, to back, back to hip hop where you got it and leave it there right you know what you know what's always funny to me like you got you got white artists that I think respect those boundaries better they do like that's yeah. a damn that's a damn shame when you think about it well, and, and and when they don't, everybody throws them into a weird niche place where they fucking belong. Like, like so, who? I'm trying to think of somebody right now who qualifies as like, I could like, like, um, like Beck. Mm, it's like, yeah. yeah, Beck, we love you, but you don't belong anywhere. You belong in Beckland. <laughs> right. Yeah. Over here where Beck goes. <laughs> like they don't put Beck in with like a whole bunch of other people that are not Beckish, cause Beck does everything. Right. He does hip hop too. But I'm not bringing up Beck in this conversation and saying, yeah, Beck is the same fucking. No, the fuck, he's not. He's a fucking genre bender. So yeah. he belongs in a in a in a weird place where you put that shit. Yeah, kind of like Bowie, right? Well, Bowie was a rock star. He was still a rock artist. Mm, was he really? Yeah. Yeah. That was he played a guitar a lot. <laughs> 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 so you know, it's certain things that, like, I, like that that we're saying, certain things will define you. Like, you know, if you're walking around with a guitar too much, unless you're Prince. Prince played a guitar, but he played a lot of funk music, so you can't really just call right. him. But see, I don't know. Like from what I can hear, I can I can listen to Prince music and be like, oh, okay, I can hear. You can hear more of the foundation of funk with Prince. You can. But with Bowie, but, with Bowie, I don't know a lot of times. It just depends on what album listen to. I guess. It's <laughs> more rock. It's much more rock with Bowie. But again, mm-hmm. Prince, is a book, you know, in our community, and Prince had his own lane. You didn't put Prince in a lane. And, and that's my thing is, all these folks that don't want to be in a lane, every, yo, dude, you ain't Prince. <laughs> don't tell them that. Okay, somebody needs to, they know they ain't Prince. <laughs> you're not, like, you're not working at a, at a high enough level with your own art. For you to be like, oh, I'm in my own lane. No, you're fucking not. You all sound I'm the same. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. No, no. Yeah. You're a and single. Then, 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 
You're a thing. Another, another, another thing I noticed when um you had people like like Prince and um David Bowie, like when they would do stuff like that, they mm-hmm. didn't do it to the point. They didn't do it to the point where they shock you. Like um we, we were talking about um Childish Gambino, how it's like earlier yeah. in his, earlier in his career it was just like okay, this is a rapper, and then like it just like it's like a like straight transition. It was like it wasn't like, like a complete like, 180. I was slapped in the right. face. Right, exactly. It's like, wait, straight, you know what I'm saying, from a rom com to a hard flick. Yeah, I'm like, what is, I'm like, what is stuff like that the whole time, though. But he was, he was mostly spitting when he first came out. Yeah, mostly. Right. Mostly. It's different. It's different when you play with it. Like, if you do stuff like, um, that's like, all right, for example, let's say Lupe. Like, Lupe did, um, um, Hello Goodbye on, on the cool. Yeah. Now, I like that song. But mm-hmm. if the whole album sounded like Hello Goodbye, if his whole next album after that sounded like Hello Goodbye, I would have been like, what the fuck, Luca? Well, I mean, just like when when Speaker Box and Love Below came out and Love Below dropped and Andre was mostly singing. Classic. Right. It, it, See, it's but I feel like, I feel like even... Like, but you weren't shocked to the point where you were like, the fuck, Andre? Exactly, because you had already heard him play around with that type of stuff um, yeah. a, a lot before then. Then he had speaker yeah. box to soften the blow, so. Right. And again, what level is it being done on? Is, um, exactly. Is Big Boy a sing songy rapper? Nah. He does. He's, he's, down. he's a rapper who occasionally might sing, but he's not even singing enough for it to be notable. Mm. Now, Dre is a rapper who I would say sings. Because he got whole fucking songs where he ain't doing shit to singing. I would say Dre had his own lane, too. Well, he has the bit. Now, see, I had to. That, that's where I slap Childish Gambino you know, because I don't fucking know what he's doing. <laughs> I'm confused. He's he's I'm confused. I don't like that. See, again, then get, get off the fucking <laughs> way. <laughs> Okay. Stop this shit. Okay, I don't want to be confused. Leave me alone. <laughs> and, and I don't want to be lost in your pastiche either because he he does too much shit that sounds like other shit that I like. Like mm. 30, 40 years ago. Maybe 50. But again, his audience doesn't know that he's borrowing shit from 50 years ago. Cause they don't know shit about the stuff that happened two years ago. Yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to. Um, you know, abide by the rules of 10, 15, 20 years ago. They don't want to abide by the rules. And that's why this all will be a wash, and somebody else will come up and make better music after you. Unfortunately, they don't want to be held to all these standards. People, older people, got too many standards and rules. You mean like be good? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't really care what you do. Is if 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 all these people were high, I'd be like, all this shit is confusing to me. But I, you know what? I can't. I, I like this shit. I like it. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, people are shitting on it because it's bad. They're not shitting on it because. <laughs> It's different. It's different. That shit because it's because it's all it's not even male. It's, no, we just we just hating because they getting money. That's all we hating because they get money. I don't money. care shit about your money. This is art. <laughs> Fuck your money. I don't care about your money in art. And your money is not putting money in my pocket. Why do I give a shit? I care what you're doing to other people. I care how you're ruining things. With and like hurting things, not knowing what it is you're fucking doing, who you are, what what you're sending out into the universe. That's what I care about. Yeah, I just feel like um, I feel like it's a like it's a huge generation getting now. Like like I said before, like you didn't have you didn't have artists of um, you know, um, whatever whatever um era. Shitting mm-hmm. on the artists that shitting on artists that came before, like you never you, had not, it. Not, not like this, no. Like, you know? like what you didn't have is both. You didn't have artists who came before 
shitting on younger artists and you didn't have younger artists shitting on older artists that came before them because right. the music wasn't sucky. It wasn't bad. <laughs> like, that's case in point to all the points we make. Like, right. you've had some older folks that complain about the content. Like, oh, this music, the things they say. But they didn't complain about it, about the music itself or the quality. You know, because, like, Lauren Hill, people across all age groups love that. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Well, okay. it depend on it depend on what old head you talking to too, cause you got you it got does. certain old you got certain old heads that just like, well, I don't like the rap music, cause they all they do is still our music and you know, whatever, whatever, blah 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 blah. Yeah, there's there's definitely, but see, if you make a case for a Pete Rock or a premiere, and then you set it up and you show them what Marley Marl does and how they sample and how it, then they're like, oh shit, that's you know what? That's still creative. Mm, like right. you might actually be able to sway them, but I can't sway them with future in general. N- nah, not at all. <laughs> That's probably not gonna happen. So, um, yeah, that's um second period. And are you feeling okay? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. You got a cold, you got a cold back there. I hear you coughing and sneezing on the mic. I'm a little, I'm a little congested. I'm all right. Oh, no. So, um, so I want to give recess to Yomo and Malky. Yeah, I just want to um, they are not new artists and they don't exist anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> Malky actually joined Ice Cube Lynch Mob after Yomo and Malky broke up. And for anybody that wants to go look Yomo and Malky up, it spells Y O M O and it's an and and then Malky M A U L K I E. And ironically, Yomo and Malky made the first version of For the Love of Money. Okay. So that beat that you hear Bone Thugs rapping over, right. that was that was Joe Moore and Malky's first. And they have a their, their one and only album that was on Ruthless. They were signed to Ruthless Records. I, and I actually have this tape. The CD is out of print. If you can get the tape, most of you listening do not know what a tape is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you did, you don't have anything to play it on. You could try to find it on vinyl. Just go to YouTube um, and listen to it. Their album is called Are You Experienced? And it's, it's called that in homage to Jimi Hendrix's Are You Experienced? But the, the U is... It's just the letter U for Yo Mama Monkey's album instead of being a U, Y O U. They have a song on there called Mockingbird, which talks about how R and B was tampering with hip hop. And how mm-hmm. hip hop was tampering with R and B. And that song came out in nineteen ninety one. Ahead of their time. Okay, well because that shit was becoming a thing. Right. Even then, everybody was like, well, why are you going after me? They was like, because this is our aesthetic. This is our art. And you're dumbing that shit down to sell. And everybody knew it. We knew that shit was coming. We saw it on the fucking horizon. So we saw the... But, I mean, the question is, the Yomo and Maki see Bone Thugs coming in and sampling their song for the love of money and then doing a sing-songy shit over it. Like, for real. <laughs> that's, a, that's fucking irony right there. You know what? You know what's uh, funny? Like, I didn't... I never heard of them until um, 
until Dre's Dre's Compton album came out. Dre's Compton album came out, and then I heard Love of Money, and I'm like, why he take the? I'm like, why he take the Bone Thugs, John? Like I, I'm sitting yep. here thinking of Bone Thugs when I first nope. heard it. And then um, you know, because we got the internet now, like I went and looked mm-hmm. up the Bone Thugs, John, and like the comments sent me to them. Mhm. Yeah, I've never heard of them before. And yeah, before because that. they they were like the public enemy of the ruthless camp. Mm-hmm. And I yeah, like I that's... loved. I had everything on ruthless back in the day. Like I literally had I had Terry B. I had CPO, Yomo and Marky. I had fucking Jimmy Z. Jimmy Z was a flautist. Damn. There was there was a there was a white dude that played the flute that was on the ruthless and I have his tape. I can put my hands on it right now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I mean, they were fucking, uh, fucking ahead of their time with that shit. Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, they were. Now it's a lot of it's a lot of obscure artists that um um people either don't know about or like people forgot about. Mm-hmm. Especially from especially from that time, like you know, like you have an artist like here today, tomorrow and shit seem like. Yeah, well they like, that they, they never became commercially viable, so right, they just kind of faded into obscurity. But they were dope. They were. From what and I they heard. were talking are they about. Still, are they still? Are they one of those um groups that's like still touring though? Because I know it's groups like uh rapping forte that's still touring. I think Maki is still in a lunch mob. Mm. Mm-mm. I don't think so. Oh yeah, well, we we would be remiss if we did not also point ugly fingers at speech from Arrested Development. We forgot to <laughs> talk about him. <laughs> Take him to another place. Yeah, you started some shit, speech. <laughs> He get Whitaker. Well, well, he does get Whitaker's, but he does like have songs. They have Very songs cool. where he just like on Mr. Window, he's just rhyming. He right. does break out in the song at the end, though. But that's still he's still rapping and then he sings. He's not yeah. like, but like fucking, he's borderline sing song because Tennessee and everyday people is nothing but singing. But he just sounds good though. That that's why he doesn't get the eye. Just like fucking bone though. Uh, I didn't. I never considered Arrested Development mainstream though. They were. They were huge. I think I missed that boat. They were everywhere. They were huge. <laughs> like like to the point where other rappers were kind of like almost pissy at them sometimes. <laughs> Because of what, like, because of like the the brand of whatever they did would kind of mm-hmm. like overshadow, you know what I mean? What other people did, kind of sort of. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause like I remember put, a time when. Go ahead. Would you put Would you put an act like um Soul to Soul in that same vein? Nah, Soul to Soul is definitely um so Soul to Soul is really a weird type of. Um, set up. So the first two songs that everybody knows, Soul to Soul for, like the ones that everybody knows them for, those two songs were not songs that Soul to Soul themselves wrote. Those songs were written by Karen Wheeler. Mm. And she was never in Soul to Soul. She was just featured in those two songs. And they just happened to be Soul to Soul's two biggest songs. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So those two songs that you fucking know them for were actual songs by Karen Wheeler. Hmm. So Back to Life, that, that's a Karen Wheeler song. Right, right. Second. It, you know, sometimes when you find shit out like that, it's kind of like, like I didn't talk about Shaw Day when we talked about our R&B show because, because Shaw Day, number one, is not her real name. Her, her name is Helen. But Shaw Day is her stage name, and Shaw Day is actually the band. Right. Yeah. So all those songs you hear, so I couldn't really call Shaw Day the best R and B singer or put her on my list because Shaw Day is the band. I would kind of have to say Helen, like. Right. So Helen. I was, um, 
Yeah, for people people that know, no. But I think a lot of times they just let people run with it. Like, okay, call it a shot. Of. Nobody knows that shit. Nobody knows I mean, that? Seriously? No, no <laughs> nobody nobody knows that Shaw Day is the band. Seriously? They have no no, they have no clue that Shaw Day is the I, I band. I found that out a couple years ago. Yeah. Everybody I thinks it, Shaw Day I knew, is the I knew it her. back then. We, like back when we was in your class, I knew that. I did too, but I found it out. Mm. Like, like when I was I was young when she came out. I was like maybe in the sixth grade. Right. I didn't know Sade was the band until I got maybe to college. So that was a long time. Right. You know? It's the same thing. Like Jamiroquai is the same thing. Like Jamiroquai is. Yep. The name Everybody of the band. It is. And everybody thinks that he his name is Jay. Right. <laughs> but everybody thinks his name is Jamiroquai. Like, no, Jamiroquai is the band. Like, seriously? <laughs> that's yeah, that's interesting. I wonder I think they just let fans run with it though. I, that's what it seemed like. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. But um so um yeah if you want to try to cop your more monkeys effort get out there and start digging your little heart out. Maybe okay. go find you know, Amazon. Amazon uh, has the tapes. If you want to pay like eighty two dollars for the CD that's out of print, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Try the vinyl. Like it look. I suggest your more marky vinyl. Don't don't try to do the other shit. It's not gonna work. Just go go like dig around for the vinyl wherever you look for vinyl at, if that's you know your thing. But get, get you some vinyl. It's, it's worth. They only got five years. five picks left. See. They go like hockey yeah, barrels. I, I well, I mean, I already have one. I got a tape player, so. Damn, <laughs> they got they got trading cards. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, your mom walk, got trading cards. <laughs> they got trading cards. That's hilarious. Why would we? Why would your mom walk have trading cards? I don't know. You know who shouts out your mom walk all over his the um his his work D O C. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go back and listen to it. You'll hear him say it because they were on that album. They did like backup work and stuff. Oh wow. On on no one can do it better. Yep. I sure did, but um, uh, what was I getting ready to say? Oh, so homework for next week. Next week is our dear white people breakdown of the show, dear white people, and the movie, dear white people. So if you have not watched the mini series on Netflix, dear white people, shame on you. <laughs> it was amazing. Well, if you haven't yeah, yeah. seen the movie, the movie's been playing a lot on like Aspire or something. Y'all like the movie? Y'all like the movie or the show better? I didn't really care for the movie. I didn't even finish it. You did? Nope. I couldn't get into it. I like the I like them both. I think the show is just able to do more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's got yeah, it's got yeah. a lot deeper. I think people what just you, people just nowadays putting more effort into TV. But Netflix, yeah, where is that? I definitely yeah, agree. Put, with you. Like Netflix, yeah, they put more. It. Yeah, they're not putting as much effort into movies as they used to. Well, I mean, the the shit on Netflix is just really good. It depends on what you're talking about. That Death Note shit is trash. That shit was trash. Which one? Death Note. Death Note. Oh, okay. I mean, Luke Cage. <laughs> you didn't. You still didn't watch the anime, did you? I still gotta do that. Now I think about it. Yeah, I do. <coughs> I need an Amazon Fire Stick. <laughs> that's that's like one more thing I gotta do now too. Well, I got that. Um, I got here. that program set up on my laptop. Really? I don't have a Fire Stick. How do you how do how do you do that? I'll send you the instructions. <laughs> Word. 
Are you um, teaching me how to bootleg over the air? <laughs> I'm, I'm editing all the time. I was trying to be as big as possible. <laughs> I was trying to be no. as big as possible. No, you're not teaching me how to bootleg over the air. No one heard that. <laughs> I don't know what you're Netflix. talking about. Talking exactly. About I'm talking about a dude who I like. His stick is fire. Now. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron is the straight man. Seriously, <laughs> that gave me time. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe you people. <laughs> And he's probably like, I can't believe this woman used to be my teacher. She says crazy things out of her face. <laughs> and that's why I am now no one's teacher, because I need to say crazy things out of my face. Uh, yeah, like the like the mini face guy? You are now no one. A girl is no one. Mm-hmm. Oh, shut up. No. <laughs> <laughs> A teacher is no one. Hey, so do you guys think... Do you guys... Cause, People have been telling us that we go too hard, and of course, this show is no exception because we went hard in the paint <laughs> on some things today. Some things need to be going hard on. If that makes sense. Um, that make sense. Do you think we should have more <laughs> shows where we go light on things? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I think that's so disingenuous. Anthony- Anthony just called that we're not going to be frolicking through the daffodils with the basket on this show. <laughs> nope. We're going to call it how we see it. And Yo, before we, before, we finish, before we finish the show, um, that's why I meant yeah. to ask. We're, like, uh, like, where are we putting Queen Latifah in that uh, sing, singer-rapper thing? I, I, I think I would call her like Missy. I think I would call her a rapper who sings. But she sings mm-hmm. better. She sings really good. Not yeah, better than Missy, I, but she just sang. I never really got into that. Now that I'm thinking about it, I never really got into that album where I think she like sung the whole project. Yeah, that she did. That being the Owen song? Yep. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I, I like it. I, I didn't listen to that either. I liked it. I think females get a get more of a pass, too, because they're females when they come to that. I think you're right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know what? Give me a dude that can do what Lauren does. I'll give him a pass. Mmm. Uh, challenge. Now I'm not. I'm not actually. I'm not thinking about somebody you that said can do it. Like this fucking. I just. I'm, I'm kind of nervous <laughs> that you threw that out there because you got people that's gonna be like Drake. <laughs> no, we've already no. no. We've already established that Drake does not do either at a high level. <laughs> so no, not Drake. He does not sing particularly well. He does not rap particularly well. Like Anthony says, he is poppy and that is his niche. People like <laughs> yeah. his poppy ass. You know, he's just catchy. And right. But he's ain't, I nothing mean, wrong. He ain't, ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't mind catchy. It's fine as long as you don't keep making it more than it is. Mm-hmm. And people yeah, exactly. love making him more than he is. Exactly. Yeah, that's my issue with it. Like when people get put on this type of pedestal. Same thing with Lincoln Park. Like I don't mind listening to Lincoln Park sometimes, but people people like to hold them to this type of level of. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. Know. They want to be the Beatles and shit. Like no. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not what's going on. Look, I, I'm trying to think right now of a of somebody who would be like a male Lauren Hill. Yeah, I don't think I can. Yeah, I don't think of any. And I, I dare you. For some reason, Lockup just came to mind for some reason. He doesn't sing as well as her though. Oh, um, like, somebody, like, somebody like, argue that because he's no. Like, the, Black Club John ain't going on nobody's R and B list. You put Lauren on your R and B list. <laughs> but he's like a Caribbean artist. He's doing something different. No. <laughs> he ain't going to buy a fucking dance hall list either. <laughs> he just he can't he he doesn't sing as well as Lauren. Lauren is just I'm, like seriously when she was singing "Killing Me Softly." And that's just singing. There is no rapping that she's doing. It's just singing. That's a song that she sings. 
it there's no mistaking. She is just she's able to do both. Right. At a, yeah, at, I, I get. At I, yeah. Level. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Cause like you can see, like at the same time, you know, I could see, I could see Lauren in a cipher, but at the same time, oh, I can still see. But at the same time, I could still see her on stage next to somebody like Tony Braxton. She'll whip your butt in a cipher. Justin Bieber, go in there with her. <laughs> 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 that how, that would have been funny too if Justin Bieber had gotten there and then he was like, okay, come on, come on, Justin, and then Lauren steps in. Yeah. Like there you go. You wanted to be in the cipher, Justin. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so so we put somebody in who's also singing and rapping just like you, right? <laughs> there you go. I I never see Justin be in no cipher. <laughs> that would be the only way I'm saying if you're going to let him in, that'd be the only way is if you let Lauren in. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if I wanted to pass then. No, but but it's, it's not gonna, gonna pass. Gonna, it's a fucking lesson. Like it's a lesson to be learned. Is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren is gonna rip. Lauren ripped that stage a new one, and that stage ain't do shit to her. So what do you think she would do to Justin Bieber? <laughs> right. This is hilarious. All right, you guys. Um, we got we got insecure to prepare for tonight. Ugh. Yes, yes, y'all. This should be interesting. We gotta figure out. I gotta figure out how I feel. Like I, <laughs> this one will be interesting. Like, okay. like y'all just getting Bino to figure out how you feel. Yeah, I got I, I gotta sort some things out before the show starts. I got. Oh, you guys know what? That new show comes on tonight. The one that Method Man is in. That seventy mm. show. It's not. Um, it's not called that seventy um, show. Called. It's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. With uh, I think Black Thought was in it too. He is. Yeah. And uh, Maggie, Maggie Gillen, Gyllenhaal. Yeah. And Jay, um, what's his name? The one who I love so much. Franco. So crazy. Yes, I love James Franco. Yeah. This is I. This is from the people who did The Wire, right? I did. Yeah. Mhm. So I'm excited about that. I'm gonna watch that. It's an hour and a half long, though. Really? The pilot is. Yeah. Damn. Oh my God, Anthony. Yeah. What is, this, what is yeah. this thing called? Y'all tell me about it. I'm not gonna watch it. Nah, not yet. Yeah, I might not watch Why? it tonight. I think I'm gonna watch it tonight. Why? It's been on. Yeah. I thought it was out already. Game of Thrones is off. What you gonna do? Yeah, I know. After I'm done with Insecure, I'm going to just be like, I'm going to be in here. You know. It's called The Deuce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say it's called The Deuce. I just, I just looked it up. It is called The Deuce. I thought it was out already, though. Um, I think it's... I thought it was coming on tonight, though. Yeah, I'm falling back from TV after Insecure done. You're really? not going to catch up on Power? I, 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 I caught have- all the Power. I watched all the Power. I haven't. <laughs> you haven't? No, Yo, you I'm still on season one. I'm still on season one. I watched. I watched. Okay. I done seen all the. I done seen all the power. I done seen all the um, uh, uh, all the Game of Thrones. I don't know. Power missing something for me. Power is missing a lot for me right now. I can't do this with power no more. I'm not gonna give it away. And then they not. Me. They talking about not bringing. They talking about not bringing Atlanta back. No, it's coming back no, next year. No, it's coming back, but it's just because it's because of childish. Because of, well, sorry, Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's doing he's, Star Wars. He's, yeah, he's doing a movie, so he can't he can't do this now. Hmm. He's playing Lando. No, he can't Lando, so the shit has to go on hiatus <laughs> <laughs> for, for right now. <laughs> he's got, I got a I got a Lando right now. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Mr. Mr. Glover has the Mr. Carisian. <laughs> Oh, that I tell you guys about how I met um how I met Billy Williams before. I think so. No. <laughs> Re- refresh our memory. He tried oh, to give you a quote forty five. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I had bought me and my best friend go to show up to the to his book signing because he did this he he co-authored this book. 
But we just wanted to meet him. So we go by the book, you know, and then we stand in line so we could get signatures, right? So the little kids were like, were like, oh my God, Daddy, it's Linda Carice, Linda. And so he was like, you know, kind of smiling or whatever. And um, and I was like, that's not Lando. I said, that's my dude from Lady Sings the Blues. <laughs> and so as I got like like closer up on him, I I said, are you just gonna stand there and let my arm fall off? Hey, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he heard me. He started cracking up. <laughs> He was like, he said, I guess somebody knows me from something else other than Star Wars. <laughs> yep, and so he was laughing at me when I got up there and he signed my um he signed my book. I still have it. I would have had him oh, sign man. a Code forty five can for me. He was real cool. He, somebody else was talking about Code forty five too. But it was but I wasn't gonna embarrass him like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was one of those, you know, landmark moments. Oh, man. He was smooth as awesome. shit, too. Like, even in person, he was like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You, enough, you, don't um, lose smooth age. you don't lose smooth age. Yeah, you, you don't lose it. I think he, he, he could probably still pull some ladies, I think. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. He's like, hey, how you doing? Because his, his voice is just... You're like, oh my god. <laughs> what, what is happening to me? <laughs> but um, we gotta let Sniffles go get some rest. School is officially out. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> And that's where a commercial comes on. <laughs>